how you doing? Hey, today I'm working on the Homelite Super XL Auto, but I ran into an issue. Yep. Um, not a big issue, but it put me at a standstill until, you know, I get an order. So probably going to be delayed a week here. Um, let me show you what had happened to me today. So yeah, the Fordham cable broke on me, as you see. Um, if you have one of these setups, it's not a bad idea to order an extra cable or two because you will use them eventually and you can avoid, you know, stalling yourself if you keep them. Um, different things will cause it to break today. It was just my big old belly, you know, see the big belly. So the, what happened, so what happened is the, the end of it got tangled in my shirt here. And the shirt stalled it out and caused the cable to break. <laughs> One of the nice things about having a big belly, huh? But let me give you an update on what the home light looks like. All right, so I thought you'd like to see the difference of what I do on the uh, crankcase side of these Super XL autos whenever I'm porting them. But let me show you what I got going on. I'm a little bummed, you know. <laughs> As you see, I use the flap disc system a lot. Uh, I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. All right, so this is factory. This is what she looks like from the factory. There's the intake, nice square shape to it okay the left side pay, pay attention to the left side because that's where i'm at i'm working on that left side and i was working on the intake whenever my cable broke so i'll show you kind of the differences okay we'll set this like this now here's this one See how that left side looks? The intake coming in. There's what the intake looks like right now. now. You see how there's kind of a funky shape to it? So what I do is I use the flap disc and get down in there and get rid of the sharp corners. And then I'll come in later and get the in-between spaces and make it nice and even, or better than that at least. That's what I was working on whenever she broke. You can see the line there where there's still that sharp corner, you know? I basically just wanna get rid of any sharp corners that are in there. Here she is from this side, I was in there. Working on getting rid of the dirty stuff. Let me show you side by side. You see this up here? Take a look at this one. Just getting rid of those sharp edges so she flows, you know, unrestricted. Let me see if I can try zoom in here. I think it'll give you a better view. Yeah. So, see how that is? And see how it is on this side? Nice and smoothed over. Now this here edge, see here? I will round that over, but I'm, I'm just gonna get rid of the sharp corner. I'm not gonna take a whole lot off. I'll just get rid of the sharp corner. Now the intake, there's your factory intake. See how it's a nice square shape, sharp, you know what I mean? I don't like those sharp corners. So what I do is I get in there, just however big the flap disc takes it, is how much I take out. Let's get rid of those sharp corners, you know? On these intakes, I don't use a grinding wheel. I do everything 100% by the flap disc. Let's 
So, see a difference there? Well, another area to look at, you see that shelf right down in the center there? That's where the intake is feeding into the crankcase. And you can see I was working on getting rid of that. Now I will get into these corners here and here and get them smoothed over. Looking more like this side. But I'm at a standstill, you know? Cable broke on my Fordham. Now, as far as what I use, it's, you know, so Doug made me this toll that goes on the Fordham, and I just wrap this up around it and kind of make my own little sanding setup. That's what I use. And this is the sanding paper, emery cloth, whatever you want to call it. Um, looks like 120 grit. Uh, I don't typically go with 80 grit on anything. I, uh, I just like a little smoother finish, if you know what I mean. Now, a lot of folks would say that's good enough for an exhaust port, but I actually go to this i had a viewer send me this and i'll i'll finish off with 320 on an, on an exhaust port but these home lights have an exhaust port shape that you know nice and square it's kind of hard to to get a nice clean finish in those but you just do what you can you know now a little update on the mac um, so I have not got you any more progress on this. Uh, I kind of switched over to the home light. I'm just kind of going back and forth between the two, whichever I feel like working on, you know. Sometimes it gets a little tedious. But somebody had asked how I'm doing it. I'm not exactly doing it the correct way, but I'm just, I'm just doing it the best way that I can, if you know what I mean. So what I'm doing is I'm, putting a, I'm running a flat edge across this edge here, this seam. And then I'm using the calipers to measure the bearing pocket at the bottom on both sides. And you know, once I have an idea how deep I need to go, I'll go that deep, like say 30 thousandths, I'll measure from that straight edge to the bottom of that bearing pocket on both the inside and the outside. So I'll measure this side and I'll measure this, the inside. And I, that's just to make sure I stay square and then I'll just slowly work it down until I hit, you know, the 30 thousandths or whatever I need to take off. And then I'll also, you know, I've been using just dirt smeared on the bearing. And as I, you know, put the bearing in there and I, I apply just a little bit of pressure to it and pull it out. And I can see the dirt transfer to the crankcase side where the high spots are. And then I just focused, you know, my sanding efforts on the high spots and continuously back and forth between measuring and sanding and checking high spots and stuff and you know just a thousandth at a time until i get there takes it takes a long time to do it but that's how i that's how i've been doing it the uh on both sides so if i took 30 thousandths out of this side. I made sure I took 30 thousandths out of this side and measured and everything. And then I make my final tweak at the piston. So I measure squish all the way around. And as long as I come up with the same squish number the whole way around, I feel like I should be good and square across there. You know? Um, it's not perfect. It's as close as I can get it without, you know, having the machine chop to my availability so i just do the best i can with what i got well there you go yeah we're in standstill a little delay in the progress but you know it is what it is we'll just have to get more you know we'll just have to order a new flex cable for the uh for the fordham and we'll be back up and running um i'll tell you though that sanding setup for the fordham 
is probably the tool I use the most. So if you don't have one, get yourself one because it is, it's the one tool that I use the most by far on all of my work. Now, some folks might say that's a little too smooth in the intake or in the crankcase and stuff. It should be rougher. Um, me personally, hey, I don't know. It's one of those things, you know, are airplane wings rough or are they smooth? You know, um, I'm sure there's an in-between point that's optimum. Um, I just, you know, I just polish or I just, uh, I just leave it at whatever finish the sandpaper I'm using takes me to and just run with it. You know, do I notice a difference? I think it's better like this than dirty personally. Um, I think you get better flow over a dirty setup. So, you know what I mean? It's one of those things. Um, some folks think it should be rougher than that. Some folks would rather it be smoother. And me, I'm kind of in a between area, you know, right around that 120 grit or so. That's, that's what I put it at. So whatever finish I get off of 120, that's what I run with. It, to me personally, it's like an in-between because you could go to a three or 400 grit and really smooth it out more, or you could take it to an 80 grit and leave it, you know, a little bit more on the rough side. Um, I'm kind of an in-between person. So that's what I do. But anyway, little update on the tragedy of the Fordham today. And uh, hey, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.